Hi, this is Science with Chris, and today I'm going to be discussing macro videos during pregnancy. During my ED rotation, a pregnant patient with a UTI came in and I suggested macro vid, and the resident said that that's contraindicated, and I was confused, and so now I had to do all the research to figure out why he said that. So macro vid is one of the three medications used to treat uncomplicated UTIs during pregnancy. There's macrobate, which is nitrofurantoin, there's phosphomycin, and there's also like penicillin derivatives like cyclosporins. Macrobit is a bacteriostatic um, antibiotic. You have to take 100 milligrams Q12 hours for five to seven days in order to get rid of all the bacteria. It usually concentrates in the bladder really, really well. That's why it works. It was discovered in 1953, and it is a bacterial flavoprotein that goes into the bacterial cells and dis disrupts like macromolecules, similar to like ribosomal proteins and cell wall synthesis proteins. It has similar action to kind of how metronidazole works. And I am re redoing like three different articles that have touched on macrobid use during pregnancy. Uh, the first one I'm going to be talking about is a Crider et al. paper. This was in 2009. This is a huge paper that look, looked at a bunch of different antibiotics and how they affected um, outcomes uh, after delivery. Um, the other paper I'm going to be looking at as well is a 2015 paper by Goldberg, kind of reassessing a meta-analysis specifically for nitrofurantoin. And the last paper is going to be the OBGYN practice bulletin 717, which discusses sulfonamides, nitrofurantoin, and their use during pregnancy. So for the first paper, it's the Crider et al, and this is in 2009. And um, this was down in Emory, and what they were looking at is they were looking at recall in patients with a case control study where the moms were asked if they took a specific antibiotic or not one month prior to the first trimester of pregnancy. And they were asked at least, or within two years of them delivering. So there's a lot of potential bias for this, but um, regardless of that, what ended up coming out of this was there was three main things that were found to be increased in moms who reported that they took nitrofurantoin compared to moms who didn't. And this was hypoplastic left heart syndrome, um, ASD, and then cleft lip with cleft palate. So those three things had a increased odds ratio if they took nitrofurantoin during pregnancy. So more specifically at that paper, which was in JAMA Pediatrics, um, they looked at a bunch of different antibiotics as well. And I can like post some of them right here, but I really wanted to focus on nitrofurantoin. And aside from that, they ruled out type one, type two diabetics. They controlled for age, race, gender, education, um, uh, pre-pregnancy BMI and folic acid used. So it was like a pretty good study. The concerns that were also brought up in the practice bulletin 717 by ACOG was that there could be a recall bias in mothers that have um, children with deformities. They might um, say that they took nitrofurantoin or they're more likely to remember it than moms who didn't have any child with the deformities. Kind of going on that as well, there was opportunities for when the mom, they could actually give a list of antibiotics to the mom, and the mom could say that they took a certain type of antibiotic um, instead of actually direct recalling, and they never actually went back into the patient chart and assumed and confirmed that they actually took that specific antibiotic. So it was all um, uh, what the patient was saying and reporting. So that was the one paper, and that was the whole concern about using nitrofurantoin during first trimester for uncompl uncomplicated UTI. That being said, you're also not going to be giving nitrofurantoin if the patient has G6PD deficiency because of the hemolytic anemia, and you're also not going to give it if the mom has a UTI at term because between 38 and 42 weeks you give it, and it's going to disrupt a uh, the opportunity for glutathione reductase, and because the erythrocytes in the fetus are really underdeveloped, they can destroy them. So you can get hemolytic anemia at term in patients who don't have G6PD deficiency. So that was the concern. So really now during first trimester, like what's the, what's the situation? Goldberg in 2015 came out with a meta-analysis looking at three primary papers that assess nitrofurantoin use during pregnancy. And what they were able to show was that using the Crider et al. paper, 
that there was a significant difference, and that was on table six, on figure six, and it showed that um, the odds ratio was 1.59 to 5.93, uh, with the odds ratio of 3.07. And this is interesting because the other two papers, which was the Goldberg in 2013 and Nording in 2013 as well, um, they both showed that the odds ratio range actually crossed over one, so it wasn't really significant, but Kreider really showed that there was a strong relationship specifically with hypoplastic left heart. So they didn't look at other things in regards to the ASD or cleft lip with cleft palate. So really it's hypoplastic left heart was the concern with nitroferrin tone. And kind of going off of that so that we have a good understanding of how the fetal heart is developed. I'm not gonna go into like how it's reoriented and changed, but roughly at uh, after fertilization on uh, day 21, that's when the heart starts beating. Around three to four weeks, the heart's actually formed. Around weeks five through eight, you are going to have the AV valves form. And weeks five through nine, you're gonna have the semilunar valves and AV are like the tricuspid and mitral valve and semilunar are gonna be like aortic valve and stuff. So that's the kind of the heart development around that time. So really after week nine, there should be no concern about taking nitroferrin toin for the concern about hypoplastic left heart, which was uniquely un which was uniquely found in the uh, Kreider paper. So this whole thing kind of just culminates into my better understanding of why people would be reserved at giving nitroferrin toin during pregnancy. Um, in my opinion, looking at the literature, I don't think this is warranted. Um, that being said though, I mean, it always is something that you need to talk to the patient about. In regards to taking medication though, phosphomycin would be probably a little bit better for the patient because this is a single dose, where nitroferrin toin was that 100 milligram Q12 for five to seven days. Um, any questions or concerns, um, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks.